He laid it out. This commandment I give you. And this is his commandments now. You already got the ten that Moses gave. We, we're looking at that. That's fine. But Jesus said, love God with not some, three quarters, nine tenths. What? With all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. That ain't leaving nothing for nobody else. I can't pledge allegiance to this. One nation under God, that is a lie. If this were a nation under God, why are we suffering? Why is there so much poverty and want and neglect if this is a nation under God? Satan has deceived the whole world. And we've been deceived. Because if you give your allegiance to Christ, that's it. You can respect and serve in a righteous way. But allegiance? No. I gave it all to God. I have nothing left. And the second commandment is like unto it. Love your neighbor. Love your brother. As you love yourself. Then, he said, on these two, hang all the law and the prophets. So already when you are up with him in love, you are above the prophets. You are to fulfill what the prophets prophesied would be fulfilled when Christ comes. I'm finished now. Look. Jesus before he left his disciples, he started using the personal pronoun, which he had never done before. I wrote a study guide. I ain't reading it for sure. But I just wanted to read this that we wrote concerning Jesus and what he said about himself. When Moses met with God in the burning bush, he said, who, who should I tell him sent me? Tell him that I am, that I am. Now just think about that for a minute. That's a heck of a thing. I want to tell Pharaoh, you know, something about you, your name. Tell him I am. That I am. That says it all. I exist. I'm in the world. I've come to take power to myself. I've come. I made Pharaoh big. So that through him I might be made known. I gave him power. And then... I hardened his heart so that I could destroy him. And when the world sees that the great one that is claiming my position is put down by me, they will bow down and submit. So here comes Jesus now. Moses told him about I am. But now Jesus, in the book of John, he starts. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth in me shall never thirst. And just think about that. See, we are hungry, but not for this kind of food. 
We are hungry for the feeding from that eternal spring. And he's telling you that if you tied to him, the Christ, you're not hungry. Because once you start with him, he just keeps you going up, up, up into that word. And you will never thirst. I am the bread of life. Boy, that is heavy. And then he don't stop. He goes on. And then Jesus in St. John, the eighth chapter, he said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. See, if we are in the dark now, most of us, we have no solution for the problem in our families. We don't have a solution for the children in the street. We're kind of, we may not want to admit it, but we have failed. Our kingdom work is more vanity than substance. I have built the biggest church that you have ever seen. I got 20,000 people in there every Sunday. But what kind of people you got? What, what are you doing with them? What are you making them into? See, it's not the number, it's the quality of what you make with that word. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by what? The renewing. Of your mind. See, you still got that same old slave mind, ego-driven, crazy, got to have the biggest car, the biggest house, and this is going to make you the biggest preacher because you got the biggest church, and you find yourself in hell, and you say, damn, how did I get down here? The Jesus I know, he didn't build one church. He came in and out of the synagogues, you remember? He said, ooh, these places are like whited sepulchers. In them are the bones of dead men. Ooh, that's chilling, isn't it? Then before he gets crucified, he's driving the money changers out of the temple. And people in the temple, they selling this and selling that and showing off this and showing off that. Everything is about money. It's not about the salvation of these people who desire to follow Christ. All right. Then he says, I am the door. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastor. And if you try to come up another way, you a thief and a robber. I am the door. He ain't say, I am a door. No, I am the light. I am the door. I am the bread. Ain't no other after the. You can be an A, but he is the. I mean, he's the perfect example. He's God. He's complete in himself. And he wants to make us into him. And that's why he said, you will be changed. And in the twinkling of an eye, and we will be like who? Well, isn't that our hope? I'm closing. He said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd will lay down his life for the sheep. We haven't had good leadership. Many of us would not lay down our lives for the people that are in our house. We won't challenge the wolf that wants to eat the sheep. 
we want favor with the mayor of the city. We want favor with the attorney general. We want favor with people of power, though you are greater than all of them. Your favor comes from God. And if you bow down to another as though they are, then you become less. You see? I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, even though you are dead, yet shall you live. Now you're thinking about some dead folk in the cemetery. Bring your mind up out the cemetery. You are the dead. You are in the grave. What grave? You're buried in the flesh of your bodies. The spirit is dead in those who are dead in the flesh. This is the earth. This is the heaven. And when heaven and earth don't work together, the spirit dominating the flesh like heaven dominates earth, then you get taken over by the flesh. Look, look, look at your people. Look at your people. Here we are. We go to college. We get a degree. We go to theology school, get a degree. Okay. Which should equip us with the power to be more like him. Yeah, right. <laughs> Lord Look I'm saying this to you in love Not that I'm perfect Far from it But dear brothers and sisters We can't play with Jesus You can't play with his name you can't use his name to get an emotional response out of the people to take their money, but you will not guide them. You will not guide them into his life. Somebody earlier said, the blood. It was my pastor with the little girl. The blood of Jesus. What are you talking about? You can't drink nobody's blood. All the sickness and health of any man is in his blood. When Jesus said, drink this, this is my blood. He wasn't talking about the blood of his flesh. He's talking as blood is the life fluid of your body. Hmm? Live the life. Eat the bread, the word. If you eat the word and live the life, then you are anointed with the Holy Spirit that is in that blood and in that word. And if you got the Holy Spirit, I'm not talking about something that you get in church when the tambourine is knocking them down and the drums is beating the hell out of the drum and everybody is jumping and shaking. No! If you can't get the Holy Ghost in your house. If you can't get him when you're going downtown looking for a job. If you can't get him when you need him. You may not have him. But if you feed on that word. Take this Bible down off the shelf. Tell the congregation, dust it off. Let's talk about this great book. And then let's look at the life that Jesus lived and let's walk after him. And when you walk after him, you get the anointing of that Holy Spirit. Then you got power that when you say, I rebuke Satan. We can say it here. But see, before you 
get really too high off that. Satan has to be revealed. 